Hello. I just wanted to respond um, to your discussion about the informed consent that was being provided in the counseling practice that you were referring to. And what I found interesting is they put in there, or you had the information that their first session was for 90 minutes. And I had been reading an article um, that had done a study on like the readability of informed consent and the article was written by Samuel Lustgarten in July 2017 and basically it was a study about um, how readable informed consents were and after the work that we had been do doing looking over the informed consent and you mentioning the 90 minutes that had me wondering because I know when I go into the doctor's office or something they give you that paperwork I don't really read through it but I sign it so I'm wondering if in that 90 minutes if they're allowing for time for the client and the counselor to go over the informed consent if you think about it and they made some really good points in this study a lot of time when clients come in they may have a learning disability or dyslexia um, they may have some mental incapacities that are inhibiting them in different ways. However, they may be able to advocate for themselves, so they're responsible for signing that informed consent. So my question is, is even though the ACA Code of Ethics is allowing um, or mandating that counselors provide the informed consent, are all clients able to read and understand that informed consent and are they ensuring that clients are understanding what they're signing so when i was listening to your um video on the informed consent and you were talking about the 90 minutes in the first session um, one of the really good questions i have is in those 90 minutes are they going over the informed consent ensuring that the individual that they're working with or possible client that they're understanding exactly everything that they're entering into. Um, so that was it. Thank you.